Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to be unboxing the brand new iPhone 7. Be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up because I'm also giving away an iPhone 7. Details for this giveaway can be found in the video that's linked in your cards right now as well as down below in the description. Now, I also released a video unboxing the iPhone 7 Plus that will be linked below as well, and we're also going to be unboxing the Apple Watch Series 2 soon, so be sure to click that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to, that way you will not miss out. And again, for the iPhone 7 giveaway, you need to get your entries in as soon as possible. That's actually concluding this weekend. So on the 18th, it will wrap up and it will be finalized. So it's for you guys, my early viewers. And if you guys want to see even more giveaways, just be sure to let me know down below in the comment section. I might have something pretty exciting planned for you. All right, so let's get straight into this. Now on the front, we just have a picture of the back of the iPhone 7, whereas on its predecessor's box, we had the front, the display was highlighted because of the live photos in the 3D touch feature. Remember this? Yep, this was the box for its predecessor. Well, now again, we do have the back of it, probably to highlight the removal of the antenna bands that span the width of the device, and of course, to highlight the camera itself. Now on the top, we just have a picture of the Apple logo, same thing on the bottom. And of course, both sides just say iPhone now and kind of a thicker font, whereas its predecessor's box said iPhone 6S. So that's a little bit different. And on the back, we just have the exact same thing as every iPhone, which is just some basic information on the top, including what's actually found in the box, and then some identifying info at the bottom. But this is a 32 gigabyte iPhone 7. Thank God Apple finally made this the base instead of the 16 gigabyte version. And then it does state that it includes the iPhone 7, obviously, ear pods with lightning connector, lightning to headphone jack adapter, lightning USB cable and USB to power adapter. Getting into the unboxing experience though, we no longer need a knife because we do have a conveniently placed green tab just like on the box for the iPhone 7 Plus. So we can just pull this tab up and now lifting the lid does reveal this little packet sitting right on top. It says designed by Apple in California. And inside of said packet, we have three different things. We have welcome to iPhone. And then we have just this basic iPhone sheet right here that just goes over some info on the device. And then we have two Apple logo stickers. This time, all the stickers are the same color and they're just on this see-through plastic material. They're white Apple stickers. So let's set these three things off to the side here. And of course we do have the iPhone 7 that we're going to boot up and we're going to return to the box so we can see what it comes with. Of course I did highlight the contents of the box previously, but whatever. We have the EarPod headphones on the top, not the AirPods. Those are the premium $159 wireless headphone accessory. And then on the back we do have this lightning to headphone jack adapter. So we can go ahead and peel this back right here. And this does reveal that these headphones now connect via the lightning port because when we look at the iPhone 7 we no longer have a headphone jack we just have the cutouts for the microphone the lightning connector and then the speaker so let's return back to these headphones here. Honestly, I'm not too bummed about this transition to Lightning because it is an all digital connection, which means that it's going to be much higher quality than connecting via a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I feel like those days are behind us because essentially this is an analog connection. So in previous iPhone models, it would convert analog to digital. And in theory, this is going to provide a much better experience moving forward with new headphones. So in theory, headphones that integrate a lightning connection instead of 3.5 millimeter should sound better. And other smartphone manufacturers are predicted to make this kind of a transition as well. And personally, I use wireless headphones anyway, so I'm not too bummed about it, though I definitely could see how some customers will be. Now we have the lightning cable up at the top right here, which is used for charging as well as data transfer purposes. And then right beneath it, we do have the regular power brick that you can of course switch out with a different power brick if you are traveling or if you live in a different country. But let's return to the star of this video, the iPhone 7. And let's take the plastic off. This is just the regular black color, guys. This is not the jet black. So this is kind of the matte black or the unofficial matte black. It looks really nice. I'm happy that they finally killed off the space gray and went with an all black version. I just like the look of the black iPhone better. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'm also really excited to get my hands on a jet black, though that might not happen anytime soon, but be sure to click the subscribe button below because I'm going to let you guys know as soon as I have it, and I'm going to do another unboxing on it. All right, so here we go. This is just the basic on-screen setup, and I'm going to go through it really quick, and then I'm going to be right back. 
All right, so here we are near the end of the setup and I wanted to go over this step with you guys because this is definitely new. It says, meet the new home button, make your iPhone experience even more personal by choosing the click that's right for you. Remember, the iPhone 7 does not have a physical home button. Instead, it is a solid state home button, which means that it essentially doesn't move at all. It basically emulates a click using Apple's Taptic Engine. It's the exact same trick that they use to make the trackpad on the new MacBooks feel like they're clicking. So let's go ahead and tap on get started. We can of course also customize it later in settings, but it gives you three different choices and by default it sets it at two. But if you want, you can bump it down or you can bump it up to three. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is the second time I'm doing this because of course I did also do it in my iPhone 7 Plus unboxing. I am definitely partial to the one. That feels much more precise and more like a regular click. Whereas two, it feels like something else is going on. And then three, it feels like the whole bottom of the phone's moving, especially if you're holding it at the bottom like this. But if you are holding it more like this and you're using your other hand or you're using the same hand to kind of click it, then that kind of dilutes it. But either way, I like the one better. So I set it at one and I'm going to probably keep it at one, especially for my daily usage. This feels good for me. This feels like a more authentic, precise click at the home button instead of the whole bottom moving. And then of course, now we just get the option to pick our zoom. So we're just going to select standard and then tap on next followed by get started and here we are now this iPhone should be on iOS 10.0 not 10.0.1 surprisingly which of course is the public iteration of iOS 10 that was the first release that was issued to the masses earlier this week but for whatever reason we do have a day one update so inside of settings general about you will notice that the iPhone 7 needs an update for iOS 10.0.1 not too big of a deal so you can do it either via the OTA method just inside of settings or by connecting through iTunes. We're gonna do that later though because I wanna download Geekbench so I can give you guys a Geekbench test. Quickly though, let's launch up the camera and you will notice that if you guys watch my iPhone 7 Plus unboxing, we do not have that little 2X button down below at the bottom right above where it says photo. That's because we just have a single camera lens here on the iPhone 7. We do not have a dual camera setup, so that means we do not have a hardware-based zoom. In fact, we can't even really tell how far we're zooming in if we bring up the zoom in little slider right here or we actually physically slide in like so, which is how I got the slide to appear in the first place, it doesn't tell us. Whereas on the iPhone 7 Plus, we can get up to that 10 times digital zoom. This almost seems, this seems like it's more than two times though. So maybe this is more like five times. It definitely feels like half of what we get on the 7 Plus. All right, and before we run through some benchmarks, I just wanted to go over some of the physical differences between this device and the 6S. Now, if we look beyond the new color option, the differences start to become apparent, especially when we take a closer look. So we do have a bigger camera bump on the back, even though it is not that dual camera lens setup. And we also have four flash modules instead of just the two true tone flash on the 6S. And we do not have that antenna line that spans across the back. In fact, on the black, as well as on the jet black, you can barely even see it. It's probably really hard to even pick up on camera, but we do have an antenna band right there, as well as the one that goes across the top as well as the bottom and of course on the bottom we also do have the side ones as well but they're very very hard to see in person as well as on camera I'm sure and then it just says iPhone at the bottom and we do not have any way to tell that this is an iPhone 7 other than if you were familiar with the differences I just went over and the new color but we do have the model number. So I guess if you happen to memorize the model number and look at someone's iPhone, you would know it was an iPhone 7. Again, but you'd probably notice the other differences first. Now we also have these two speaker cutouts because we do not have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but wait, the one on the left is not a speaker. That instead is a microphone cutout. And then we have the lightning connector and then the speaker. But you might be saying, well, hey, the iPhone 7 is supposed to have stereo speakers, right? How does that work? Well, see, this little earpiece up at the top is actually also a speaker. So now this doubles as an earpiece as well as a speaker to create the stereo pair between the bottom as well as the top because two speakers right next to each other can't really create a left and a right channel. So those are the physical differences with the iPhone 7. Now let's run through Geekbench to kind of see how this thing fares, especially against the iPhone 7 Plus, which I already ran Geekbench on. So we're going to go ahead and run through these tests. But first of all, you'll notice that the identity 
identifier is iPhone 9 comma 3, at least for this one. For the iPhone 7 Plus I unboxed, it was iPhone 9 comma 4, running again iOS 10.0 with a processor, an ARM, or an A10 Fusion chip. It just hasn't been updated to pick that out yet. Running at 2.24 gigahertz. This is a quad-core processor and two gigs of RAM versus the three gigs on the 7 Plus. Now let's go ahead and tap on CPU followed by Run Benchmark, and this is going to take a second. So I'm just going to zoom in here and we're going to speed this up and I'll be right back. All right, finally, after what felt like forever, the iPhone 7 is done. And we do have a really awesome Geekbench score here, guys. We have a single core score of 3212 versus a multi-core score of 5541. This is absolutely insane. And this is just slightly lower than the scores on the iPhone 7 Plus. Now the iPhone 7 Plus came in with a single core score of 3460 and a multi-core score of 5620. So the iPhone 7 Plus does perform slightly better. Of course, it does have that added RAM bump, which I'm sure helps. But regardless, the iPhone 7 is still an absolute beast, and this will blow away any other smartphone in its class. So the iPhone 7 does have some really awesome Geekbench numbers here, guys. I'm super impressed by that, and you're probably not really going to notice it in real-world applications, but when you're playing some intense games, you definitely will, especially those that are GPU intensive. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up again if you did check out my giveaway which is linked down below in the description and stay tuned for more coverage on new apple products and until next time this is icu signing out join the icrack your iDevice community on patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below